Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the attention mechanism. It is the underlying mechanism behind the transformer model, which is the model that uh, powers technologies such as the large language model, such as chat GPT, which is the most famous of these large language models. So this is one of the most famous papers that came out, came out in probably the last 20 or 25 years, which is called attention is all you need. Um, this paper describes the transformer, which you see in this figure one of this paper, which is the model of the transformer architecture that underlies the large language models. Today we will talk specifically about attention, which is what the, the most innovative part of this transformer architecture. And in order to explain the transformer, I will use this illustrated transformer um, a article which is I, I find one of the most useful articles to explain how the attention mechanism works and I will give a link in the description of the video so that you can also sort of look take a look at this um, website so first let us at a high level take a look at what the transformer architecture does basically it predicts the next word this example shows an example where we do a translation from French to English but you can also sort of uh, in in the chat gpt in it, it does not do a translation but it basically predicts the next word so for example so in the chat gpt case our example input would be something like i am a student and we will be predicting something like who for example the next word and basically what we are doing is taking in this input and predicting a huge vector which has the size of the whole vocabulary and we are taking the word that has the largest probability. So basically, we will what we will indeed predict is this large vector, which is full of mostly very small numbers like zero, close to zero. And then there will be one number whose, which corresponds to who that will have a very large set of value. And then there will be another set of set of zeros here. And that's sort of the basic idea of what um, how the whole transformer architecture works. So it's basically a next word prediction. And then in the next sort of iteration, we'll be say, asking the input, I am a student who, and then asking it to predict the next word and so on and so forth. So with that sort of general idea of how the transformer works, let's shift our gear and try to understand attention. So if we look at the transformer architecture here, basically it consists of n encoder layers, which is shown here. The nx basically signifies that there are nx such layers, and then there are nx sort of decoder layers, which are shown here. So the, so this sort of um, shows this, ex, this figure here shows it more explicitly, where we see these n, n encoder layers and n decoder layers. And each of these encoder layers consists of two parts. One is the attention part, which we will talk about today. And then there is the feed forward neural network, which many of you are already familiar with. So just to make sure this is basically what is happening here. There is to add a norm here, which I will touch in the last part of the video, but let's forget about it for now for simplicity. So now what does this self attention layer do? Um, the most important thing to remember here is that when we input these words, je suis étudiant, and please forgive my French here, um, basically what we are doing is we are input, converting these words into a set of vectors. So this is a vector which is in general 512 sort of dimensions, but in this case, let's just look at four dimensions for visual sort of um, uh, clarity. So this is like four, basically four um, floating point numbers. So this could be something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.11, 0 0.5. So something like that. So that's that, that's basically an embedding. So an embedding represents this word and each of these words are represented by different sort of factors of size four and uh, with different floating point numbers. And that's basically um, the input. So now we understand what the input here is. So the input here to the self attention layer is a bunch of vectors of floating point numbers corresponding to the words. Now the output of the self attention layer is exactly the same. It is also a corresponding set of um, 
floating point numbers, which you can see here in these Zs here. Um, so the Z1 here and the Z2 here, these are also sort of those kinds of same floating point numbers, but different floating point numbers. So the basic idea of attention, and this is probably the, the most important takeaway of this video, if even if you sort of don't understand the nitty gritties, the most important thing to understand is that what the attention layer does is that it says that how can we construct these Zs by taking a weighted average of these Xs. So the Z1, for example, could be, you know, 0 0.1 multiplied by this X1 and then um, 0 0.8 multiplied by the X2 and again like 0 0.1 multiplied by the X3. So these three numbers add up to one and by taking sort of the weighted average, by taking 10% of X1, 80% of X2 and 10% of X3, we've constructed the um, Z1. So Z1 basically here corresponds to sort of adding up those sort of components. So we multiplied these by these components and then we added them up and constructed Z1. So that is basically what is attention is doing. And all of the mathematical calculation in attention layer is saying how can we um, determine how much of the X1 to add, how much of the X2 to add, and how much of the X3 to add. Now, why are we doing this? Um, intuitively, the reason that we are doing this, and I love this example here, is because we want to know um, long range um, uh, dependencies inside a language, inside a sentence. So la language has long range dependencies and this is a great example. The sentence here asks, says, the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. Now, if we look at this word it, um, we don't know what this it corresponds to because the animal occurred a long time ago, like four for five words ago and previous language models weren't good enough to sort of capture these long-term dependency. But when we construct the attention, the attention basically says, you know, when the, the percentage of the animal embedding that you use in it will be large when you train the model. And that will tell the model that the it corresponds to the animal. That's sort of the intuitive reason why the attention is so important. It helps us capture long-term dependencies inside languages. And it does so by specifying how much of each of these embeddings to add up to construct sort of the final embedding. So now let's look at what happens sort of mathematically. Um, so mathematically, I, I want to find these um, sort of proportions. And the way I do it is by constructing three different um, uh, vectors corresponding to each of these embeddings. These are called the query, the key, and the value. And basically, you multiply the embedding by a matrix um, call this query matrix to construct the query vector and so on. And you did do this for each embedding. Now let's look at this example, which looks at two, um, two words, thinking and machines. So now here we had three different words. Um, let's look at only two words. If we had only two words, that's the simplest possible example. And so in this example, so for to, to construct the um, Z vector for Q1, what we do is take the query vector for thinking, and then I multiply it by the key vector for each of the words. Here we have two different words. Here we have K1 and K2. So we multiply the query with the key for all the possible words. And then we normalize these values. So we got 112 by multiplying with K1 itself. Um, which makes sense because we want to give more importance to the word itself. And then we got 96. And then the softmax basically helps us normalize these values uh, so that they add up to one. So this basically says that when I construct the Z1, I take the 0.88% um, of this word and 12% of this word. And I take these value vectors and then I multiply these value vector by 88, this value vector by 12. Um, so this is a one level of nuance when I when I sort of simplistically explain to you how to um, look at the um, 
how to sort of multiply each of the embeddings itself. In, in reality, we are constructing a value vector from these embeddings and then multiplying the value vectors themselves to get Z1, Z2, and Z3. So, um, so we've done the hard part. We've multiplied the value vectors and we have got, so we have in, in for the thinking, we've got multiplied the value vector V1 here by 0.88 and the value vector v2 by 0.12 in order to obtain z1. And that is basically what attention is doing. And I won't go into detail, but you can basically take all of the words in your, um, like the three words that we had, for example, in a matrix and do the, instead of doing this sort of one by one, you can construct uh, all of the um, vectors instead of constructing them um, one by one, you can do one single matrix multiplication and construct all of the query key and the value vectors. And then you can sort of do a matrix multiplication to get all of the C's. Now let's come to, um, uh, so if you look at figure two here of the paper, you will see that this is exactly what is described here. So we take the query and the key vectors, we, multi we multiply them, um, which is we after doing the multiplication, we scale them, which is what we showed here. And then we, I, I will not talk about the mask here, but, and, and then after that, after our scaling, we basically take and like multiply that, the, that sort of scaled value, which is the 0 0.88 and 0 0.12 we got with the value vector here. The final part that I want to talk about is multi-headed attention. So we might want to give more expressivity to the model by letting it give more weightage in different to different words in different sort of um, in different attention heads. So basically we apply instead of having one such um, self attention here, we apply like multiple sort of self attentions. And this is the idea of multi-headed attention. So in the first head, we construct one Z0. In the second head, we construct another Z and we construct sort of seven such Zs or eight such Zs. And then we simply concat them together. And that is multi-headed attention. Um, there are a lot of things that I did not talk about in detail. One of those things is posi positional embeddings. Um, maybe just to mention in one word, uh, there is no way for the model to know that, you know, uh, uh, J is the first word and switch comes after J. In order to provide that information, we use these embeddings called the positional embeddings, which are basically some um, set of vectors which encode uh, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And then that is added to the embeddings themselves. And then finally, we construct the uh, sort of uh, so send them to the encoder. So, so that's, that's basically attention in a nutshell. And the final point that I wanted to raise is that if you look at the paper here, um, we did not talk about add and norm here, basically uh, just because of simplicity. And now that we understand the self attention part here, we can talk about the add and norm. Basically we take the Z's and then we add them up to the X and then we normalize those values. And this is sort of the idea that residuals sort of adding up residuals is like a very powerful method in neural networks. Um, and then we do the same thing after we pass to the neural network, uh, feed forward network. So, so in general, that, that should, have, should give you a very good idea of what this figure means and how the transformer model architecture works. Uh, so that was my brief explainer of how the attention model works. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe to my videos so that I can make a lot more videos about machine learning and statistics. Thank you.